am so delighted to have a very special guest with us today. Chief Steve Silverheels is here with us at Western Film Fair. And look at this phenomenal regalia. Um, and if the name Silverheels sounds familiar to you, well, it should. Um, his father, Jay Silverheels, was the very first Native American actor on television. And he portrayed Tonto, the trusted uh, sidekick of, of Lone Ranger. And um, Chief, I would just so welcome you and thank you for being here at Western Film Fair. And um, I want to ask you, growing up, what kind of impact and influence did that have on you, that your dad was Tonto? Well, uh, growing up, uh, my mom and dad, she was a German Jew and English, and my dad, of course, was full-blooded Mohawk. Uh, and at age five, uh, they separated, and um, he went on to have another great family. And uh, so he took care of me in my growing up days. He always provided uh, income for my growing up and everything. And I disappointed him at uh, a young age by starting to drink it and doing drugs mm. and alcohol. And uh, he tried to help me, but uh, the only way that help came was uh, I was in Raleigh, uh, North Carolina, and had been drinking and driving and ran into a car. Mm. And uh, when I arrived at the hospital, the doctor said that... Uh, that I, uh, I was completely black, I was dead. And mm. so they tried to revive me. And uh, four of them worked on me with another doctor. And they, all of a sudden, they said, well, what time is it? And they were giving up. But this one doctor, he told me later on, he said, I don't know why I didn't stop. He said, I kept right on going. Mm. He said, and after a few seconds, there was a bleep on the screen, he said, and they come rushing back. Wow. So it was not your time no. yet. God had much more for you. Well, I always tell people God has a plan for your hand. <laughs> and he had a plan for me. Mm -hmm. Even though I broke every commandment when I was growing up and dishonored him and used his name in vain. Mm -hmm. he, uh, the psalmist says in, in uh, Psalms 136, it says seven, uh, 25 times it says there, his mercy endureth forever. Mm. Well, you have certainly been a recipient of his tremendous mercy, as we all have. Yes. Tell us what happened next after you lived and didn't die. What What was your next part of your journey? Well, the doctor came in and said, somebody up there likes you, son. <laughs> and I said, well, and I, I turned a, a leaf over. Mm. You know, you ever heard the saying, you know, turn a leaf. Well, mm -hmm. I turned over a new leaf for about six months and then the wind blew and I went right back into alcohol and drugs. Mm. I thought then I was invincible like most people do today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way they're invisible, invincible is when Jesus comes into their lives. Mm. They that's become good. born again, a new person. And that's what happened to me in 1974, April wow. the 18th. I had a vision and uh, the good Lord spoke to my heart and uh, and I woke up after the vision, kneeling at my window, looking out at the stars. And uh, in the vision, I saw a great cloud coming mm. down. I didn't know it was in the Bible. Mm. I never read the Bible. And uh, a great cloud came down, and he was on it. I couldn't see his hands, feet, or anything. But I knew then, after visiting so many missions on Skid Row and everything over the years, the preachers would talk about Jesus before he could eat or, or have a bath or anything. That's how bad it was with me. I was on skid row. Mm. Wow. But the hand of God was on upon me all those years. And uh, I've been saved now for over 41 years. And I uh, had a wonderful wife, my partner, and she's in heaven. But I led my dad to the Lord before he died. He called me in, and with tears in his eyes, he knew what God had done for me, what the great creator had done, he said. Mm. He says, this same great creator I'd like to know in my heart. Mm. And so I led him to the Lord. Oh, and then a few awesome. months later, Mama came to the Lord. And they're both in heaven, ah. waiting on the rest of the families. So That's awesome. Yes, he's been good to me. I've had a long journey, a good journey. And, um, many, uh, you know, my bags are packed and I'm ready to go. <laughs> If he calls me. 
Well, he still has a lot more for you to do, but uh, your story, especially about your dad and leading him on his deathbed, pretty much, to the Lord, is really a, a testimony to all of us that have loved ones. Do not give up praying for them. Do yeah. not think it's too late that, right. um, that, that people's hearts can be tenderized um, up to the very last minute, and uh, they can enter heaven with the rest of us. And you do have a tremendous ministry. You've been in television. You've been on films. You've done a lot of work. But your greatest work is among Native American yeah. Native Americans, and you've got a wonderful ministry where you share the gospel in a cultural context to them. Tell us about that. Well, the Native Americans always believed in uh, a great creator. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the fo folks always called him God. We called him the great creator. Uh, people called Jesus, Jesus, but we called him the great mystery. <laughs> and it's spoken in the Bible about the mystery of his word. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you folks call him the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But we call him the great creator, great spirit because he lives inside us. We are spirit men and women, mm -hmm. the Bible says. And when we're spirit men and women, if we live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, God will fill our lives with abundance of joy and love and happiness, and He'll forgive us. I said, there is no sin greater than the grace of God. Mm. None. Amen. <laughs> and now you spent, you and your wife spent about 20 years, wasn't it? In, was it Arizona on we a reservation? We spent 20 years on different reservations. We set up little mission stations around, and... Uh, we enjoyed doing that, and uh, so a lot of Native Americans come to the Lord, and uh, they praise the Lord in the spirit, mm. just like the black people do. I, I minister in a lot of black churches, too, mm -hmm. and um, I just love wherever God sends me. He told me, he says, you're going to be ministering. When, when he gave me the name House of Nations Ministry, mm. I spoke to him in a prayer, and he st told me, told my heart, he said, you're going to go into many denominations mm. and share my gospel with people. And so I have. Thank God he's opened the doors, and I've gone through them. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I didn't know where the next penny was coming from, mm. but he did. And I would... I've always been blessed. Mm. Always been blessed. And is that how you're spending your time these days, just ministering the love of Jesus and salvation to everyone you encounter? Yep. I go to cowboy churches. I go to every church there is that invites me. I had one man call me up, a preacher, and he said, uh, Harry, you're in town. He said, could you come and preach at uh, our Baptist church? And I said, sure. He said, well, how much do you charge? I said, well, honey, I don't charge nothing. I said, uh, uh, freely, he's given it to me. Freely, I'll give it. Mm. And so he said, well, is there anything that you need? I said, well, I'd like to have dinner on the grounds. I don't think there's any preacher alive that don't want dinner on the grounds. <laughs> but uh, dinner on the grounds and uh, so I can meet your folks. Aww. And so uh, we did, and uh, God blessed, and they had more men. There was only like 35 women in the church and two men. Mm. And uh, they advertised I was coming, and I went, and... And the Holy Spirit went before me, and when I left that church, about three months later, the pastor called me. He said, there's more men in the church than there is women. Wow. He said, it's just been a tremendous outpouring of God's Holy Spirit. I said, it sure is. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure hearing these stories that there will be a lot of churches that would like to invite you to come in. How might uh, pastors and churches and organizations contact you to invite you? Well, I've got a website, uh, but I, I, uh, people can call me. Uh, at uh, 910-200-8848. And that's in North Carolina. I live in Hendersonville, North Carolina. I love it up there. My, my dearly beloved wife passed away in 2009. She was always at my side, always encouraging me. Mm. And she was my greatest prayer partner and critic, I must uh, say. And uh, I tell men and women, I said, hey, listen, you've got a wife, have respect for her and you. Have mm. respect for him. Because that's what it takes. People say, how, how could you be married 40 years? I said, because we never went to bed mad at each other. Mm. We prayed. We said, I'm sorry. Whether she was sorry or I was sorry. We always came together and said, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Mm. Wise words. Wise words for all of us. Yep. And um, The only thing I have uh, that uh, I really, you know, she used to sit out in the audience in the churches. When I preached too long, she'd go like that, you know. <laughs> 
And, uh, so, but, I can't uh, imagine you ever preaching too long. I'd want to hear you all day long. Well, I appreciate it so much. Do you still have an opportunity to minister in the in the Native American community? Yes, we have a, a church over in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina, called the uh, uh, Red Path Baptist Church. It sits right off the Catawba Reservation, and we have a great preacher over there now uh, doing that. Uh, Bill and his pastor and his wife Robin, and. Uh, Eddie Williams. And so I go down about three times a year. I hold a revival down there once a year with uh, other pastors. And I go down there and, and share with them in, in that area. And they're the love of my life. The children just love uh, beating the drums and praising yes. the Lord. I mean, it's really amazing how many children are in that church. And I love the fact that you really do present the good news in a cultural context because I'm very involved in a ministry to the Arab world in the Middle East and it's phenomenal to realize how many believers there are all around the world but who live in a different culture and yeah. Jesus is not bound by culture and that's what I love. Or people. denomination. Exactly and so you are helping them express their love, receive salvation in a way that is meaningful to their own culture and I so appreciate that. I want to tell you a quick funny story. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was up doing revival in uh, in uh, South Carolina, and I happened to stop in his park, and there was a black man sitting on the bench there. And I said, would you mind if I sat here? Because I was going to sit there and just pray and meditate and take in the beautiful scenery of that park. Uh, ducks were going by and everything, and so he said, no, have a seat. And so I was sitting there for a little while, and I closed my eyes and was just praying in the spirit when I heard him say, uh, do you live around here? And I said, no, sir. I didn't want to really say anything, but I knew it was bad manners. So I said, no, sir. I'm just up here holding a revival at the AME church. And he said, well, he says, uh, so you're a preacher. I said, well, I'm an evangelist. I said, a preacher has, he's the shepherd of the flock in the church. I said, my flock is all over wherever I go. And I preach. And uh, so he said, well, before you leave, would you pray for me? Mm -hmm. And I said, I sure will. I'd be glad to. And so we talked for a while, and uh, he told me, he said, uh, he said uh, we've been together for only 40 years, Sadie and I. And he said, uh, I just don't know how to tell her. The doctor told me today I've got uh, melanoma, mm -hmm. stage 5, and he, I could go any day. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, we'll pray about it. And we did. We prayed right there. I anointed him with oil and prayed with him, and we just had a good time. And then... Uh, as we got ready to leave, I was in my truck, and I leaned out the window, and I said, uh, his name was Willie Walker from Hoggy Boo Swamp. And I said, well, Willie, I'm going to pray that uh, God will give you the right words to speak to your wife. And he looked at me kind of quizzically, and, you know, he said, well, I'm not married, preacher. He said, Sadie's my mule. <laughs> and I said, well, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> But uh, it was, it's a cute story, but, uh, at, you know, God healed them. Oh, God that is great. Them. Oh, I love that. And, uh, you have a, a healing anointing. You've got a healing ministry. Well, I have a, a praying in the spirit, mm. and, uh, and God does the rest. That's great. If we're obedient. And, but it takes two. It takes the person you're praying for to release their faith to God. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'll release mine and let Jesus do the rest. That's so great. You know. Well, now, let me ask you, are you doing any more films and television? I know that you and I have something in common. Mm -hmm. We both got to work with Andy Griffith. Wonderful man. You did, yep. Loved him. You did a two-part episode of yep. Matlock. We did not, unfortunately, get to work together. That's right. You shot here in, in Wilmington, North yeah. Carolina, and I, was, I had left the show by then. But you did a show that was one of the highest-rated shows we ever had called The Scam. Yeah. So and what I was never it? let him forget it either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet he loved working with you. He's Tell a lovely us about man. it. He's what a was lovely that like? man. I loved working with him. As you know, mm -hmm. he uh, he expected the actors to know their parts because he was very, he knew all of his. He went boom. He, yep. he knew what to do. Yep. And uh, so it was, a, it was a, a pleasure to work with him. I knew him for many years. Uh, my dad knew him out in Hollywood and everything, but he lived in California. And my, matter of fact, I didn't know, but at the time, my wife was a young girl. He was in California, and she had been uh, over in Nags Head. And he uh -huh. lived up in there. He has a house up in there. Yep. And she went down there with a girlfriend looking. And uh, 
I guess his mother was there at the house at mm. that time. And she came out and uh, said, what do you girls want this private property? She said, well, we just wanted to see Andy Griffin's home. And so <laughs> she took him in, the girls, uh. and, and, and uh, that was really a treat for her. Of course, uh, after we got married and everything, and uh, I told her, I said, you know, we've been, I've been in the skid row right to the White House because mm. uh, Ronald Reagan invited us up there and we had a great time up there. And that's where I learned a lesson from God. I was coming down the elevator and... Uh, at the Omni Shores Hotel in, in uh, Washington. And as I was coming down, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you're going to honor a great man tonight. Hmm. And I thought to myself, that's right. Ronald Reagan is a good Christian man, uh, one of the greatest presidents I've ever known, hmm. uh, other than Lyndon Johnson. And uh, we uh, came down, and they surprised me by coming to the table and said, uh, Ronald Reagan wants you to pray tonight and give the invocation at the dinner. Well, it shocked me. But the guy said, uh, the Secret Service man said, don't use the name of Jesus. Mm. He said, we got Muslims here. We have everybody here. And I said, well, I can't do that. I said, the Bible says if I'm ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of me before the Father. He said, it does. Where does that say that in the Bible? I said, and I told him, and he said, um, doesn't make any difference. Don't use the name of Jesus. Well, I said, well, you better get somebody else. And so he went up to Senator Dole, who was sitting up there, and Senator Dole sent him back down and said, tell him the president wants him to raise. Well, I, I, by that time, my wife and I had holding hands, and we were praying a little bit and uh, asking God, what should I do? And with, by the time he got back down, God had spoke to my heart. And so I said, I'll do it. So he said, don't remember, no Jesus name. So by the time the president came and sat down, they called me up, and I went on the platform and prayed. I don't remember what I prayed, but I do remember the last words that I prayed. I said, uh, and we ask all this in Yeshua's name, amen. Well, most of the people out there didn't know who Yeshua was, only the Christians and the Jews. <laughs> and so Ronald got up, shook my hand, and hugged me, and sent her to Dole and a few others, and I come down, and all of a sudden the whole people, Muslims and everybody stood up and was given applause. Wow. And it dawned on me right then. Mm. <laughs> we honored a great man. Yep. A man called Jesus. God's word to you is accurate. You did honor a great man that night. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I cry, but. No, it's sweet. It's the spirit of the Lord, and that's so genuine and so real. It, it just shows all of us that he is so uh, deeply ingrained in you and he is so rooted, you're rooted. so tender yes. toward his mm -hmm. spirit so we appreciate that well i appreciate you and, and i hear you got married to a good preacher i did i got a good preacher boy that's good yeah that's and he's a musician he's a worship musician so uh, yeah well, praise the lord so before we leave chief silverheels is there anything else you'd like our viewers to know what special bit of wisdom would you like to give them well i, I want them to know this obey god above all things no, God is a good God. No matter what your past is, it's not greater than his grace. And he'll come to you and knock on your heart. And if you'll open that door to your heart, and all you got to do is say, Jesus, he'll come in. He'll make you a new creature. And he'll set you on a life's journey that you'll never, ever be able to do on your own. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I'd like to, if you don't mind, I'd like to pray for those folks. No, I would love that. Them. Yes, please do. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. A name above every name. And Lord, we just ask you to touch the folks that read or see this uh, show today. Uh, and, and just touch their spirits, Lord. Let them know that they are spirit men and women as the Bible speaks. And that all things are possible to them when they ask the great creator, the great spirit, Jesus, into their lives. He'll turn, around, he'll turn them around. If you're going the wrong way, Jesus says, hey, I allow you turns. Come on back here. And he'll bless your heart. And Father, I just thank you so much for your mercy, your love, and your joy that you put in us as Christians. 
as G. Mr. Karen used to tell me, he said, you know, Christians ought to be the happiest people in the world. And I can understand that because some have said joy and laughter is good for the heart and medicine for the bones. And I don't want no dry bones, God. And I don't want the folks out there to have dry bones. I want God to heal them, strengthen them. Yes, Lord. And I just give you praise and glory for it, Lord. And bless this young lady so much, Lord. Nancy's a truly a great Christian lady. I'm glad that I finally got to meet her face to face. And her whole crew too, Lord. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Chief. Thank you for being here at Western Film Fair and Nostalgia Convention. Thank you for being on Victory Television Network. And we know that um, all of us who have been watching this show um, have been filled with great peace and joy yeah. because you've brought it to us, the joy well, of the thank Father. You. Thank I, you. I, I, I tell the viewers I'm sorry that I have such emotion for God. Mm. We're not, and neither is he. Thank you. Well, thank you for God having bless me. You. God bless you, young lady.